Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you could play through a song called Whiskey A Go Go. And we're going to end up capoing this on second fret to kind of match the recording so that we can jump into it without retuning your guitar. And we're going to start on an E major chord, and the way you play E major, first finger goes to the G string on the first fret, second finger goes to the A string on the second fret, and third finger goes to the D string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an E major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. Now another possibility actually through the tune you'll hear is something called the E7 chord. There's a couple different ways you may want to play around with, with, with how to play this. If you lift off the third finger from where you are on the E major, that sounds like E dominant 7 or E7 chord. It sounds really nasty. Another way to play that chord is to take the pinky and go to the B string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like, as another way you can play the E7. And that's basically the one chord that we're kind of going to be playing through the whole song actually is just that E7 chord. There's a couple different ways you may want to kind of approach this, especially if you're just covering it out, actually. One of my favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So you take the E and just try that a lot. You have down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, or you could add basses to that. And one, one thing that I like to do is I add the low E string for the bass and then kind of keep the down, up, up, down, up, so kind of a bass. Down, up, up, down, up, bass. Down, up, up, down, up, bass. Down, up, up, down, up. Something that you may want to try too is just kind of down ups through the song. You kind of work in this kind of swing eight. to kind of work that into kind of that, that very beginning part. And what it really kind of sounds like in the recording is you do the E7 with kind of a bass up, 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 and then you go to second fret on the G string for kind of a bend, and then a pull off to the open G string. And then if you into your, sometimes I'll like add the second fret on the D string for that, so that makes up, up. And actually, the bass line on the intro actually is very, very cool too. You can play second on the D string twice, and then second on the A, and then open D, and then first foot on the D, and that leads you back to that second foot on the D to start over. So two, 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 oh, one, two, 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 oh, one, two, 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 oh, one, two, two, two. So you may want to kind of play around with that. And there's some other really cool licks actually that turn up through that intro where you could kind of work third fret on the G string as kind of a hammer on or a slide even and then play the open E string so you kind of hear that in some spots actually where we got kind of this A sharp to B note and then kind of the E note after and then there's there's a couple other really cool licks actually in the intro where you could do that second fret on the G string bend and then pull off and then go to the D string on the second twice and that lick kind of comes back through the tune so we want to kind of play around with that too. Now the weird part is to play along with the song. Instead of starting on an E major, we're actually starting on an F sharp major. So what you want to do to kind of play along with the song is if you take a capo and put it on second fret, then now your E major is really an F sharp major, and the E seven is a really F sharp seven. So we took it from the very beginning. You could work it as just kind of down, down, up, up, down, up through that.
with that. Or you could even gravitate to that bass line. Or if you're playing more lead stuff, you may want to try and kind of get that 3 4 open lick in there. Or you could go back to that two bend two. Might be kind of a cool thing too. Now through the song though, that there are some some cool breaks actually, where, where there are a lot of different cool uh, guitar licks through this song, and almost all of them are working off of something called an E minor pentatonic scale. Or at least we're thinking E minor. We're really playing an F sharp minor pentatonic scale. Where you can play the open E and then go to third foot on the low E and then open A and then second on the A. And then open D, and then second on the D, and then open G, and then second on the G, and then third on the B, or open B, and then third on the B, open E, and then third on the high E. And what we're doing is called a pentatonic scale because you're really only playing five notes. We're actually playing F sharp and A, and then a B and a C sharp, and an E and an F sharp, and then an A and a B, and then a C sharp and an E, and then an F sharp and an A. But we're thinking E G A B D E G A B D E G. Um, so so it's kind of cool that there are a lot of licks that that are kind of coming out of that scale through the song. Um, and you may want to kind of experiment with some of those, especially if you're just starting out. Actually, just working hammer-ons can be a good idea. Where you play one of the open string and kind of put your finger down on the next note of the scale to get to get the sound kind of carried on one one pitch. Um, so you want to experiment with hammer-ons or pull-offs where you kind of play the one note of the scale and let it fall back to the open string. It'd be a cool idea. And actually, if we added in a little, uh, another piece to the scale, actually, you could work some double hammer-ons, double uh, pull-off legs. Or if you went over to what would have been 5th fret, that's really 7th fret, on the low E string, and then 5th on the A, 5th on the D, 4th uh, on the G, 5th on the B, and then 5th on the high E. We're really going seven 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 six seven seven, but you might want to think about adding those notes too to kind of work some licks around that, that scale. So you can work double hammer on, or you kind of hammer on two notes in the scale, or you can work double pull off licks where you kind of pull off one note the next note into the open. That could be a cool thing too. So I'm kind of playing there finger fall off the string and let it fall to the open. So you may want to kind of experiment with those. You can even work slide licks in the scale, kind of going from one note to the next note of the scale. Or what, what really sounds like is happening a lot in the recording is bends, where you kind of press up and into the guitar at the same time. So you may want to take notes of the scale and kind of work, get that sound out, kind of working the bends. So there are a lot of different kind of licks that you could work, and there are a lot of places too where sometimes the notes between are getting added. And so normally this is these are called chromatic passing tones, where, where for instance that, uh, that lick in the bass note where we're playing the, the second on the D, and then the open D, and then the first fret on the D to lead into the second fret on the D. That, that E sharp is actually kind of a helping point to the E note that's in the scale. So you may want to either, and I know this is kind of like, hey, I can slow with chromatic scale, which is every note. Um, but 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 you may want to kind of kind of try and lead into those notes in the scale with the notes in between. So that can be kind of cool to experiment with that too. Um, now now in in the chord though that we're playing, this is so bluesy actually. We're actually playing some a G sharp note, or thinking a G sharp note on the G string first fret. And a lot of times that note gets added with the open G as part of the scale to kind of lead into that. And that's very cliche kind of blues thing. It's kind of the blue note to the, the major third, the flat three to the three in scale. So one lick you'll hear recurringly a lot of times in blues like this and funk like this is if you play open G and do a hammer on to the first fret on the, on the G and then do an open E string. And you can really word that to the low E string too. So you'll hear that lick kind of coming back actually through, through the tune. Um, another way to kind of work that too, and now I'm kind of playing around um, outside of the tune, but you could play third fret on the high E to the fourth fret on the high E string is kind of a G to G sharp note. And if you wanted to, you could add in the open E to that. So kind of those three, four hammer on open E could be a cool lick too. Or even on the low E string. Or you can even kind of mix that up and, and then find another E note to hit it too. Uh, 
Um, and so you may want to kind of experiment with that too. So there are a lot of these licks actually where we do the open G with a hammer on. And there's one place where we do actually kind of right before that break. Where we, where, and actually there, there are a couple other licks actually that kind of happen after that intro part where you may want to kind of play around with kind of a second fret bend on the G and then third fret on the B and then second fret bend on the G pull off to the second on the D open D and then second on the D so I got two bend, three, two bend, pull off, two, oh, two um, and then there's another lick that turns out where you go second fret on, on the G as a bend and then we play that a couple more times, bring it down to second on the G, and then open G, and then second on the G, and then second on the D. So you may want to kind of play around with that, but all of those licks are kind of coming out of the pentatonic scale. And, and then, um, and there's this really cool like little little third lick that happens where you play open G, and then open B, and then we go second on the G as a pull off to open G, and then we do second on the D, open D, and then second on the D. So these places in the song actually where the bass kind of just, just ends up doing four on the floor kind of kind of just working open E and you may want to do that with the chord and something else you may want to do is kind of take the flat of your right hand and if you lay it down on top of the saddle you can kind of get a muted quality out of the chord and you can even try the, the kind of the, those patterns we were talking about too kind of that bass down up, up down bass down even with the muted out that, that open E string. So you want to kind of play around with that. And then there, there's some answer recall spots actually where, where kind of licks go back and forth. And you can always take the scale and kind of make up your own licks too. Um, but a couple of those licks that turn up is that second on the D, open G, two on the G, pull off to open, and then second on the D twice. So that lick's kind of coming back through that part. And then you got second on the D, open G and then second fret on the G is kind of a bend it kind of comes back and then there's another lick where we play open E third on the B and then open E so little pieces of the pentatonic scale right and then that lick kind of comes back with kind of a bend idea open three bend open and then there's this crazy cool little lick actually I, I, I think I'm adding some stuff that's not there but where you go second on the D open G, four on the G, and then third on the G is kind of a hammer on the four, pull off to three, pull off to two. So it's kind of a hammer on, pull off, pull off lick. And then second on the D, second on the A, open D, second on the D, it kind of turns up. And then there's this vamp lick actually that turns up later where you play second on the A, open D, second on the, on the D, open E, second on the D, open E, second on the D, and then we start that over. So two O, 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 two So you want to kind of play around with that too. And then there's another lick actually that turns up later where you do second on the A, open D, second on the D twice, and then second on the G is kind of a pull off, and then D on the second twice, and then open D, and then uh, second on the D, second on the A, open A, D, and then second on the D. Two, oh, two, 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 oh, two, two, oh, two, two, oh, two, oh, I see two, oh, two, 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 oh, two, two, oh, two, two, oh, two, two, So what can be kind of cool too, since this is all kind of a vamp on the E and kind of working the E chord, you may want to think about doing this as a finger style thing, and a lot of times your thumb can kind of become the bass player on the E string. And what you could do is kind of use your fingers to actually kind of find notes of the scale of the pentatonic. And you could work, basically you could work the fingers offset where you're doing thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb, finger, or you'll end up with places where you're working those together. And the idea here is to try and keep the thumb doing the four on the floor and then kind of making up pentatonic scale licks. And you may have to play around with, with this actually. <laughs> this 
one idea can be to do a crazy career as a blues fingers solo guitarist. So be careful. <laughs> But that's the basics of how you can strum through and kind of play around with and jam with Whiskey A Go-Go. So good luck!